Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another artificial intelligence video. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss hiding. We have a open area to the enemy, and we want to hide it. We have two boxes on the screen, as you can see. As you can see right here, let me go ahead and draw on the screen. So we have two boxes on the screen that we want to use for our hiding purposes. So, let me go ahead and discuss the algorithm before I go into the code. So, this is the game without any of the update logic, which means uh, whenever I start the game, this is where this is basically what it's going to look like. Now, I set up to where the boxes randomly spawn in places. So, the next time I run the game, the boxes could be up here or uh, down here or something. Uh, but anyway, the player and the enemy both have static positions all right so the first thing that the algorithm is going to do is it needs to calculate a few vectors so it's going to choose a appropriate it's going to choose a box uh, and it's going to examine the it's going to calculate vectors depending on the enemy position and then it's going to add some value to that so it goes outside of the box so we get a nice radius outside of the box Alright, so let's look at the right box for an example, for right now. So the first thing we need to do is calculate a vector between the enemy and the box. So we calculate a vector from the enemy to the box. Now, along that same angle, the same angle that this vector has, along that same angle, we need to calculate the uh, length of these, the the radius of this box, the it's a square box, so half the height or half the width, and then we get a get to the edge of the box. Then we need to add another a few values to get to the radius. So it moves along that same angle, so it gets out to the edge of the box. Then it goes a certain value, a nice delta value, and we get to this point here. Okay, so at that point, we have a vector. So this vector, this vector right here, is dependent on the enemy's position. So this vector is relative to the enemy. Now, we need to convert this vector to the game world coordinates, which means from the very top left, we have 0, 0. So we need to convert this vector to this vector so that gives us a vector it's called v1 so we need to convert this to that this vector we need to convert vector 0 to vector 1 and we do that by simply adding vector 0 now remember the enemy position is basically a vector that looks like this uh, excuse my drawing, I think of that as a straight line. Uh, that's the enemy vector. So we add V0, we add that to the enemy vector, and we get V1. Okay, so now we need to... The final step is we need to calculate distance between the player and the box we're looking at. And that gives us length now if that length is the if that box is currently the closest box we choose that box so this is the first box we test so obviously it's going to be the closest box since it's the first one we tested so that one has won already so now we need to test the next box So to test the next box, we do the same thing. Draw a vector from the enemy to the box. And along the same angle, we calculate the half of the box width or box height. It's a centered, or it's a perfect square, so either one. And then we add some additional value here so we can go outside of the box. So that gives us this point. 
So again, we need to convert this to game world vectors. So it needs to be this. Okay. So once that's done, we need to calculate the length from the player to this box. That gives us another length. And if that one's closest, or is this one still closer? It looks like this one might be closer. So it'll choose this one. Okay, so that's basically what the algorithm does. Is it needs to get to a certain vector here, and then it needs to convert that vector to the game world coordinates instead of relative to the enemy. Then we need to see if that one's the closest. If it is, we need to store this vector, this V, so we can move to it. Okay, so let's say it chooses the right one. So it's going to move uh, to like right here. So it's going to move to right here. Now, I throw in obstacle avoidance in this case uh, because if there's a box like right here, let's say it's a giant box, and we need to get down here. And let me go ahead and clear this out. So let's say we have a giant box like right here, and we need to get to down here. It's going to move pretty close to the box. So when I throw an obstacle avoidance, it'll give us a nice fluid movement that once it gets closer, it'll kind of do this sort of thing. So that will be the path that it takes. Nice fluid movement to avoid the box. Then once it's done with the hiding, at this point it will be hidden. We say we are hiding, so it needs to be pointing to the enemy. So that's pretty much all this algorithm does. Uh, this is part one of the two-part videos. So at this point, we are not aware of the boxes. And let me just demonstrate what I mean by that. So let's say there's a giant or there's a box right here. Uh, we are pretty much already hidden, so we do not need to move. But at this point, it might still move uh, because we are not aware of the boxes just yet. We are only aware of the boxes when we do the calculations and we do the obstacle avoidance. So in part two, we will examine the boxes, see if one is uh, currently in the in between the player and the enemy. If it is, and it's obstructing its view, we do not need to move. We can just stay here, since we're already hiding. So that will be part two. But part one, we'll just move. All right, now into the code. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and enable the update method, all the update logic. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the find best hiding spot. So it's going to go from the player, the enemy, and the list of boxes. We have a list of boxes that are suitable for our hiding purposes. So now we have a distance. So we need to choose the closest one to the player. Obviously, the first one we select will be the closest one because it was the first one we tested. So I just set distance up to the float max value. And then the resulting vector, whichever will be the closest hiding spot that we need to travel to. Then we loop through every box inside of the boxes list. Now that line that I drew from the top right, the enemy to the box, this is what this vector will, that's what the uh, this line does. So it just calculates the vector between the enemy to the box. Now we need to get to that angle. Remember, we want to calculate the 
we want to add to the this vector the distance from the center of the box to the edge plus some delta uh, some position so we're outside of the box so we need to get to that same angle that we're using above this vector's angle and then we need to create a length so this length will be from the very center of the box to the edge of the box and then it will also add the center of the player uh, the player texture we're talking about the textures here so the player texture it will get to the cent it'll get the average dimension of the texture and it will add that to the length then we just calculate the outside of the box we multiply the length times cosine angle comma length times sine angle that gives us the outside box vector then we simply add that outside box vector to the distance box. And then we also need to add the enemy position. If we just add these two, these two will be relative to the enemy position. So this will be what we need to add to the enemy position to get to the actual point, the vector. So if we added the enemy position, It'll be the world coordinates, basically. Uh, just think of it as if we just use these two. The vector 2 will be uh, associated to the enemy. But if we take all three, the vector 2 will be associated to the game window. So we get an appropriate game window choice, vector 2, game window instead of being dependent on a game object. All right, so now we need to get the length of the choice vector. Or, I'm sorry, the length of the game object, the box that we're looking at. Get the length from the player to the game object box, and then length squared. Because all we want to know is if one's closest to another one. Whichever one's closer, we do not care how much just if one's closer to another one. So we do not bother with just dot length because we want to keep the CPU cycles. So we just use length squared. Now, if choice length is less than distance, uh, we update the distance. We set the result is equal to the choice vector. And then we set the closest box is equal to the one inside this current loop, the go object. Once we're done looping, we return the result, and we got our appropriate closest box. So, we call that hide position. And I created a vector2 called min value. And all this vector does is it has float to min value, float to min value. And that's what we initially set each position up as equal to min value. So if it's equal to the min value, you're not going to travel to negative 3 trillion uh, vector. So it's we need to calculate a new h position. And also, if your status is not hiding, I updated the gameplay object to have a hiding status. If you're not hiding and if the player is within the field of view, so if the player can see the enemy, if it's within a certain angle range, we need to go ahead and hide. Okay, so else. Now we need to do our actual hiding logic, which is uh, calculate a distance between the H position, which is what we found here, to the player position, and calculate the length of that. Okay, so now if length is less than player speed divided by 3, if we have a certain length left to go, within, we want to get within a certain error from the point. So we do not need to be exactly on the point. We just need to get within a certain uh, error range. So if it's, in, if it's within 20 
pixels of that destination, we should be fine. So if it's within this error rate, you can increase or decrease this to increase the error rate. Uh, we stop. We set it to hiding. We set the rotation to look at the enemy. And then we set the H position is equal to min value. If it's not, we need to seek to the H position. We need to move. I modified the seek algorithm. It's basically the same thing. I just set it up to have a vector 2 instead of another gameplay object. So we need to seek to the position and then obstacle avoidance. We do two at once. Alright, you've seen the seeking algorithm and obstacle avoidance algorithm. Now we do obstacle avoidance last because we're doing vector math here. With the seeking, we are just simply setting the vector. We're not multiplying, adding, subtracting. We're just setting it. Setting the velocity to that vector. For obstacle avoidance, we are doing vector math. So, remember in my obstacle avoidance, I discussed it pushes the object away from the obstacle. So, we can... Both seek and obstacle avoidance, and it will give us a nice fluid movement. Uh, draw method, it's pretty standard. So, let's go ahead and run the game. So, it chose the first one, the top one. Alright, let me run it again. As you can see, it's working fine. Let me run it again. See, it's not quite aware of the boxes. That will be in part two. So, since it's not aware of the boxes, it shows this one. It shows this one as the correct one. When in reality, the player could have just been ended up right here. It should have used both boxes instead of just one. Let me run that again. Uh, that was an easy one. Just move straight. So, it chose this one. So, as you see, the nice fluid movement for obstacle avoidance. Now, you can increase and decrease the threshold that I provide in the update method. The 200 here, you can increase the threshold or decrease the threshold. Alright, it chose the one that was right on top of it. And it did obstacle avoidance, so it moved it moved up here and then went around. Because the, the player spawned right here. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Looks like it's pretty hidden to me. Can't really see the player. The box is hiding it pretty well. Alright, so next tutorial we will do hiding part 2 and they will be aware of the boxes. Let me see if I can find one that has... Some boxes right in front. Yeah, see, it didn't really have to move at that one. Uh, you can get the idea. It might have had to move just a little bit, uh, but you see what I'm... Right there. That one really didn't need to move. It was probably out of sight. I think it spawned right here. So maybe it did just a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but... You can see what I'm trying to demonstrate here. That if the box is right in front of it, it doesn't need to move. So, at the next part, we will be aware of the boxes. If one already exists between the player and the enemy, and we are well hidden, uh, we don't really need to move at all. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.